Hello, today we are in 9.3. We're going to be graphing general rational functions. We're going to start by reviewing our simple rational function, functions that we have talked about before. So we're given our f of x, where our p of x and our q of x are both linear equations, which means both of them are going to be to the first power. When we have this and we've got y equals a, a means that we just have a number on top and our linear function on the bottom here plus k. We've talked about this previously, define the vertical asymptote, you set the bottom equal to zero and solve. So I have x minus h equal to zero. Therefore, our vertical asymptote is gonna be at x equals h. Our horizontal asymptote, if you remember, is whatever number is being added or subtracted on the outside. So our horizontal asymptote is gonna be at y equals k. The other simple rational function that we've talked about is when we have a linear equation on top and a linear equation on the bottom. Same thing we're going to do for the vertical asymptote, we're going to set the bottom equal to zero. So see x plus d equal to zero, and then you're going to solve for x. This time the horizontal asymptote is going to be a little bit different when we get the same degree top and bottom. We're going to be dividing the leading coefficients. So that becomes whatever a over c is. So our simple functions is when we are dealing with linear, e linear equations on top and or on the bottom. When we get to the general form, the only difference is now when we talk about p and q, whatever equations on top and whatever equations on the bottom, instead of being linear, they can be any higher degree polynomial. They could be constants with no variables. They could be linear. They could be quadratic. They could be cubic. It doesn't matter. And this is just a very fancy, confusing way of saying that you have the different forms on top and bottom. The vertical asymptote is going to be done the same way it was with simple asymptotes. To find the vertical asymptote, all you have to do is find, take the denominator and set it equal to zero and solve. Same way it was done for both of the simple above. Now the horizontal asymptote is slightly different. We have different scenarios that are going to tell us to do different things. The same way if you look at the simple rational functions that we just reviewed above. Our first simple rational function that we reviewed above, you had a number over a linear. If we have a number over a linear, that means the higher degree is on the bottom. Whenever the higher degree is on the bottom, your horizontal asymptote is whatever number is being added or subtracted on the outside. So the rules that play here will be the same thing, whether that equation on the bottom is linear or quadratic or cubic. If the higher degree is on the bottom, it's going to act like that simple rational function. So higher degree on bottom. When this is the case, your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals k, whatever number is being added or subtracted outside of that function. And if there's no number being added or subtracted, then it's just y equals zero. The second simple rational function that we reviewed is when you had a linear on top and a linear on the bottom. That means we have a first degree top, first degree bottom. When that happened, our horizontal asymptote was dividing those leading coefficients. That rule is going to be true here as well. So if we have the same degree, top and bottom, for this you are going to divide your leading coefficients. So if we look above, in this case our leading coefficients are a sub m and b sub n. But it's just, if it's second degree top, second degree bottom, whatever coefficients are with those second degrees, you divide those. And then our third and our new one is what happens if the higher degree is on top? If the higher degree is on top, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so two of these are going to follow the same rules as the simple rational functions that we reviewed, and this is going to be the only newer one, is if the higher degree is on top, 
then there's not going to be an asymptote. Then we come to our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. We've talked about these throughout the year, so these shouldn't be too new for you. You know for your x-intercept, this is always going to be the value when y equals 0. To find it easier with our rational functions here, you take the numerator and set it equal to 0 and solve. And you know that the x-intercepts you're solving for any real zeros. And we've talked about several different ways in which you can find those. For the y-intercept, the y-intercept is always when your x is equal to 0. So you can substitute x in and solve for y. All right, so hopefully you have your calculators out. If you don't have your calculators out yet, go ahead and take them out, pause your video. We look at our first graphing question for today. We've got y equals 4 over x squared plus 1. Your vertical asymptote, you always set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. So we've got x squared plus 1 equal to 0. We move that 1 over where we get negative 1 which means x is going to be equal to plus or minus i. That means we have imaginary. Well, we can't see imaginary things on our graph, so in this case, we don't have any vertical asymptote. For our horizontal asymptote, it happens that our higher degree is on the bottom. When the higher degree is on the bottom, if we look at our little cheat sheet above, that means that it's going to be y equals k, whatever number is being added or subtracted on the outside. There is no number being added or subtracted outside this fraction, therefore it must be a zero. So our horizontal asymptote's at zero. The x-intercept, for our x-intercepts we set the numerator equal to zero. Well, if I set the numerator equal to zero, there's no variable, there's nothing to solve for. So this graph is actually not going to have any x-intercepts. Our y-intercept, we plug 0 in, so we've got 4 over 0 squared plus 1. That gives us 4 over 1, so our y-intercept is at 0, 4. And then we'll get our, to our domain and range when we start graphing this. So again, we're going to start by entering this into our calculator. All right, when we look at our calculator, when we go to y1, we have 4 divided by x squared plus 1. If you don't have the new software to make a fraction, notice that this entire piece, x squared plus 1, all of that is on the bottom of your fraction. So when you type this into your calculator, you have to make sure that you put the denominator in parentheses. If you ever have more than one number on top or more than one number on the bottom, you have to put parentheses telling your calculator that this entire piece is on the bottom. When we go to graph this, we go ahead and make sure that we're in our standard window, so we start by going to zoom 6. And we can see our graph here. We need to plot our points. But we look at the left and we go ahead and we do our asymptotes. We see that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I put my dashed line, indicating that imaginary line, what my graph is going to approach. To get to our table of values, we go to second graph. That brings us to our table. Let's go ahead. We have our negative numbers here. So we've got negative 3.4, negative 2.8, negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 2, 2.8, and 3.4. So we go ahead and plot all of these points. And you see that your graph is coming up to a point, coming back down, and on both sides it's approaching that horizontal asymptote. Remember, our asymptotes are what we're approaching, we're never actually going to touch. Our highest point on our graph here, that max value, is at that peak of 0, 4. So when we go to talk about our domain and range, 
Don't forget domain is all possible values going left and right, all possible x values. Well, my graph is forever going left, it's forever going right. There's no restrictions, so my domain is gonna be all real numbers. My range, however, the highest point that my graph ever reaches is four, and it's approaching that asymptote of zero. It never actually touches zero. So this is all real numbers between zero and four. Pay attention to notation. This is just less than because it can't actually be zero because it's gonna approach zero, and it is going to be four. Four is that highest point. Four is included, zero is not. So pay attention to how you write your domain and range. All right, moving on to the second page, number two. We've got our new equation. Our vertical asymptote, always gonna be the same. We set that bottom equal to zero. So x squared minus four equals zero. We move our four over, square root plus or minus two. So we have two vertical asymptotes here. We've got one at two and one at a negative two. We have our horizontal asymptote. We see here that we have the same degree on top and bottom. And when we have the same degree on top and bottom, we divide those leading coefficients. So even though the one's not there, it really is. So we've got our horizontal asymptote at y equals three. Your x-intercept, you set the numerator equal to zero. And we find zero. So our x-intercept is at zero, zero. Your y-intercept, you plug zero in for x. So three times zero squared all over zero squared minus four. That gives us zero over negative four, which is just zero. So your x-intercept and your y-intercept are all zero, zero. What I want you to do now is pause, label your vertical asymptotes, your horizontal asymptote, your x-intercept, your y-intercept, go to your calculator, type in that new equation, and then plot your points on your graph. You should have at least three points for each piece of that graph there. Go ahead and double check your graph. Make sure that you are seeing what I'm seeing. If your graph does not look like this, Go back to your y equals and double check your equation. Make sure the numerator is in parentheses and the denominator is in parentheses. Go ahead and press pause again and finish plotting your asymptotes and your points. All right, check your points. As you go through, remember you go to second graph to find those table of values. You need three points per section of your graph and those asymptotes are what's creating those pieces. So my asymptotes at negative two, I'm gonna choose negative three, negative four, negative five negative one, zero, one, three, four, five as those points of reference. Now when we go to our domain and range, again, domain is all possible x values. So as I'm moving left and right, I can't have an x value at negative two because there's an asymptote. I can't have an x value at positive two because of that asymptote. So your domain is all reals except x cannot be equal to a negative two and x cannot be equal to a positive two. As I'm going up and down, I have that asymptote at zero, so my graph is not going to exist at zero. However, I have this piece right here. This max is at zero, zero. So my graph is going to exist below zero, including zero, because that point does exist. And then it's also going to exist when y is above that horizontal asymptote at three. It's not going to be three, it's everything above three. All right, we have one more graph remaining. Remember your vertical asymptote, it's the bottom equal to zero, the horizontal asymptote, since the higher degree is on top, that's gonna to tell you something. I want you to press pause now and go ahead and fill in all of your information and do your graph, and then we'll check our answers together. Quickly double check, did you enter your equation in your calculator correctly? Is this what your graph is looking like? All right, go ahead and press pause again and continue. All right, let's see how you did. We set the bottom equal to zero, so we got that vertical asymptote at two. Since the higher degrees on top, there is no horizontal asymptote. For your x-intercepts, when you set your numerator equal to zero, you end up having to factor the y-intercept at zero, three and a half. When we go to our domain and range, the only thing that x can't be is two, 
My range can be anything up and down, and we're done.